I bet on my life. But my ideas are super cool because but talk for two like these are the guys who get briefs from their brands. I create briefs for the brand for myself. From Kona Jude and Dipia, you mean I'm Cindy Swissi. I'm Veli Simba and Omele Swissiwe, formerly known as Lozzi Matonsel, bringing you a show about creative entrepreneurs live from the landmark that not only birth SA street culture, but also formalize the street hustle. On today's episode, we have Jay Carson. Kona Jude and Dipia, special edition. Uh, by God's grace. I think I think this is what we can title the episode by God's grace. By God's grace, yeah. By God's grace. We didn't know this could happen. <laughs> or as Sana would say, directed by God through my eyes. You through know? my eyes, true. Sana, yeah, come yeah. to the show. But most importantly, we got the boardroom bandit, Jay Carson Vroom. <laughs> I thought about that in the car. I was like, oh my God, Jay Carson Vroom. Vroom, like, <laughs> yeah. Because you're always moving. Sure. I don't think you go over six weeks without a collab. Now it's been like over two months since like I've been working on something different. I'm deep into like corporate work and yeah. you know, yeah. Wait, must the price over two months ago? Yeah, it dropped in June, May June. to June. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so but like uh we sold out like easily for like twenty four days we are out. Nationwide in stores. Yeah. Including online. Yeah. 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 I want to start. I want to start. I want to start the podcast in a very simple way. We're at the heartbeat, Bram mm-hmm. Fenteng. Mm-hmm. When niggas talk about Bram, they talk about Corner Jute and De Beer. That's sure. the title of the podcast. So with Corner Jute and De Beer, it's purely us giving us giving ourselves flowers. Say, yeah. yo, Jay Carson's done one, two, three, four, five. But most importantly, I want you to give the baton to the next kid who's like, yo, I'm trying to do Jay Carson things at a twenty twenty seven scale. You yeah. know, because they looking at you now. And they have their own ambitions. They're not going to go through it the way you did. Yeah. But those little droplets of knowledge, information, culture, heritage, art, traveling. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've seen the world in more ways than most people have. Yeah. You know, at such a short span of time also, sure. you've been in the game. What's the one thing you think still keeps you in the game? Because a lot of people get jaded. After two collabs, I'm the biggest nigga in the city. I don't need to talk to no one. <laughs> it's to bring change, you know. Is to educate the doers. Mm. That's why I always want to be in the game. I want to protect the game. I want to keep the game safe. You know, that's why I always want to see myself relevant in the industry. Actually, in the business of the industry, you know. Because my vision is to help guys to understand the business behind the industry. Because mm. people get caught up into just doing things and not understanding what's happening behind the scenes. So same with, let's say maybe visual artists, musicians and fashion designers. Those guys have managers, they have guys who do all the things for them. You find someone who's already popping, one of the biggest visual artists or whatever, but like those guys can, you know, type up proposals for themselves. Those guys Mm. can, you know, approach brands for themselves. It's either they have someone who's there already, who's managing them, then yeah. so. I want people right now to start knowing that they can do it for themselves without a manager, without, I don't know, but like as an artist, I feel like an artist must know how to get these deals by themselves, Mm. you know? So, because people never get these things by themselves, I want them to get these things by themselves, you know? Bueno, without, I want you to help yourself, Mm. you know? to get these deals. I want you to know how to make a deck. I want you to know how to do costings, how to know, how how to do specific outcomes, how to, you know, whatever that gets you there, the process to say, okay, yeah, this deal is approved. I want you to approve it before it's it's been approved. You know, make it happen before they can approve it. Mm. Yeah, I feel like a lot of us have great ideas, mm-hmm. but we don't know how to multiply the ideas. We yeah. don't know how to, like with uh, global artists like Takashi Palm. Takashi Palm, to a certain extent, doesn't paint anymore. Takashi Palm then licenses his brand because when I'm, ever since I found out about you, I was like, oh, to a certain extent, you both Keith Herring and Keith the brand. Yeah, because you know how to license your brand. Yeah. To meet mass demographics oh, wow. and you still know how to partner with various brands at the same time. At the same time. And it doesn't infringe on anything. And it's like, how do you do that? Because we finding my generation, it's like, 
oh, now I'm a this brand person. Mm-hmm. Like now I'm not even looking for more opportunities. Now I'm stuck here. Like you will have your partnership with Dakota and then now like you're capping it there. You're forgetting there's Birkenstock, there's Crocs, there's this, there's yeah. that. And how does one get to that point where they know how to stand up in the boardroom, know how to talk about their rights? It's a numbers game, you know? Like when I approach brands, I don't just approach one. So... What's the rundown? Approaching a brand. Okay. That's why it happens where you see me having gang collaborations because I just have like my deck yeah. with the same strategy. I just change the name brands. I can say, okay, today I want to do it. I'm going to send something to Birkenstock. The same thing that I sent to Birkenstock, I'm going to send it to Reebok. The same thing, it's the well, same layout. Maybe I could approach 10 brands. Whoever responds first, that's the deal. And it doesn't mean whoever responds first got the deal and I'm jumping to the second person who responded. All 10 can respond and we're just going to work on different timelines. So that's why people will be like, okay, how come Jay Carson does this? Because it's a numbers game for me. I knock on every door. Mm. In this era, it's cloud versus skill. Yeah. You don't have the 100 million followers. No. We're seeing people with 800K and they can't even turn a check, let alone a collab. Yeah. They'll still be doing influencer deals whereas you're doing partnerships. Yeah. How are you negotiating when many brands always like, well, what's the ROI for us? Everyone's always asking, what's the return on investment? If we are working with Jay Carson, what are we getting? Because Jay Carson's audience like 4K people. Yeah. That's what they look at. Yeah. How do you then say it in your pitch deck that this is what's going to happen when we do this? From Jay Carson is not the Instagram demographics. For mm. Jay Carson is the name. What Jay Carson has done for the brands mm. in the industry. I started working in the industry as the guy who does overview for brands, like campaign overviews. What's that? Campaign overviews, let's say now maybe um, Reebok has this new sneaker or Birkenstock has this, has a new sandal. How are we going to get this to the people? So I do the whole campaign overview to say, okay, this is how we're going to promote this product. You know, I know how to communicate the product. Mm. So I started there in the industry where I was working with the brand managers, the marketing managers, as me in the companies, I was coming in as a creative, which I was leading the campaigns through my creative ideas. You were creative lead. Yeah, I was creative lead because I'm in creative leadership. Everything that I do, it's leadership. So whatever that I talk about in the boardrooms, it's something which they consider same time. Mm. Since they know me as the guy who's been doing overviews for them so your credits are before artists before it's, artists. it's, it's numbers it's way before it was way the before thing. yeah way before because it's all about contact it's all about who you know what you know not what you know it's about who you know and there's references so you that got, it's, you're a boardroom cloud yeah i'm a yeah i'm a boardroom cloud that's how it is you know i'm in the corporate space so that's why i can get any deal i can get like a two million dollar deal i can get a five million dollar deal and, and they don't look at my Instagram um, numbers for me to give me that because I know how to approach them for that kind of deal. And I, I know what it takes for someone to get that kind of amount of deal. Okay, you know? cool. But as a creative lead, as someone who's pioneered, pioneered a lot of things, placed yeah. a lot of things, made a lot of things happen. Mm-hmm. What are you saying to the kid? I just got 15K followers. I have this idea. We've been pushing these ideas. We're tagging these brands. They're not recognizing us. How do I get to the point where I can then start approaching brand in a manner that brands will understand me? What's your thing to say to those kids? Because for you, you reverse engineered the game. Yeah. You were the game before you started before, taking from the game. F- from the game. Yeah. So this thing is straight, man. Pick up your phone. Look who's the guy who's leading the whole thing. You know? Mm. Look who are the brand, these where? brand managers. That's what they're going to ask in the comments. Where? This thing is online. Where? I online? can go like, okay... Now, it's the same thing which I said on the sobering. Yeah. I said, when I started, what happened was like, I would go on my phone, Google the head office of Birkenstock, or Google the head office of Louis Vuitton, of Caring. Caring is the company that owns yeah, yeah. Gucci, Balenciaga, yeah. YSL, LVMH, LVMH kind of thing. You know, so I would call Caring and say, hey, yo, because I can go on my internet, I type out and say, who's the brand manager? of this brand, let's say maybe of Gucci or Balenciaga, they'll show me. Then I'll sacrifice my airtime and call the head office. International call. Yeah, international call and be like, XA, who's this? I want this guy's email. You know, then they send me this guy's email. Then that's the first step. 
But like, what what are you gonna tell that guy? How are you gonna convince him? Yeah. For you to get the deal. That's the real question. That's you what know? everyone wants. Because, but like, you have to make contact first. But contact, contact is no good. It's like, yo. No, you have to have Jake con- well, You have to have contact first. Yeah. You have to have contact first. Once you have contact, you build a relationship, right? Sure. How do you build a relationship? It's about what you say to the guy. So you have to come up with ways into typing your proposals or decks where you can convince the guy who has your back. How though? What's the most generic way? Because here, yeah, you the guy. We just want answers. That's what we want. We don't okay. want to guess. Because yeah, already, yeah, yeah. we've been guessing and it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. So, let's say maybe I open up my proposal. Simple one. Uh, I'm trying to get a whole steal. I'm an influencer. I have 15K. Mm. I, have, I have at least 300 comments per post that I do. Yes. I know how to shoot. I know how to record. I know how to write copy. How do I approach holes? Because I can go on Google, find brand manager, find brand manager go on LinkedIn, number. try to interact yeah. with the brand manager. But what what do I say in that interaction? Now you open up. You open up your conversation with the guy. You say, I'm this guy. I have this much followers on my Instagram. These are my, This is my stat. And I want to put your brand on my platform. And I feel like this is my return on investment to give back to your What is the brand? most generic, best return on investment you can give any brand? Flatline for the kids. I'm the kids, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's a unique approach. Something that, that they haven't done before. That's how I work. I bring in new things. Try to... You're creative. Yeah. Ideas are in the air, man. You can grab anything, you know? I don't know how other creatives think, but like how I think, it's how I feel. So if I feel like today, I want to approach the cultish guy, which I'm close with him, Ryan, um, and I'll be like to Ryan and be like, okay, Ryan, I have this photo shoot and in this photo shoot, I want to gather 100 people and I need cultist t-shirts. Yeah. And I want to push the movement as a belief system. And the brand, and it's already speaking to us. It's cultish and I want to push a belief system. Yeah. So it's more like a cult. You know? So Ryan will say, okay, I'll bring the t-shirt since you want to push a belief system. And it's cultish. Damn. Okay. We're five minutes in then. Yeah. That's the short story too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, making the story short. But what's the staying power for you then? Because. What's power to me? The staying power. Okay. Cause you, the staying power. Yeah. Because at this point you've created, right? Mm-hmm. You, you, you're changing lives, even for some people around you. A simple thing like you seeding someone, your Reebok collab, yeah. that does something for them. It's like you seeing them. It's like Jay's that guy, Jay sees me, right? Is there a point where you feel like, I don't need this shit anymore. Yeah. Especially now I'm taking a break from fashion. I feel like that's more power for me. Mm. I feel like I don't want to do fashion anymore. You know? Because I feel like in the fashion world, I've worked there for so long, behind the scenes, in corporate, in the limelight, as an artist. But now I want to stand back because I've seen how I've been treated into the fashion industry and I don't want validation anymore. Mm. from anyone you know I did like a post like um, I think it was around June July August somewhere there where posted like a, a mule it looked exactly like a Birkenstock Boston then I posted and say yo he needs to keep the originality of them creating product yeah you know so how did they take that yeah I was approached even like the guy who runs the brand yeah. Gave me a call and say, yo, I didn't appreciate what you did on Instagram. Then I was like, yo, I was just saying how I feel. Because, like, I've worked there and I don't appreciate me wearing my Birkenstocks in the streets. And that's a 3K Boston. And a kid will see me right now thinks it's the... I don't want that. You know, when I'm wearing my Birkenstock, I want people to know that's Birkenstocks. You need to tell the difference. People don't know. Like... It's the same as um, the Yeezy slides. Slides. Yeah. If I go to the hood wearing my Yeezy slides and I bump into someone who's wearing Yeezy slides, they won't see the difference because, like, they're not really, you know, they're not detail orientated. Yeah, they're not like that. Up on yeah, like that. On, you know, so you'd know because, like, you there. Yes. Yeah. You know. 
But some people don't know. Some people, they're not like us. I get that. You know? so, that's not their shit. That's not their shit. That's why you find people wearing fake originals. That's why you find people wearing like, you know. <laughs> so that's why people who buy fake, they actually don't have the information. I said this. I was thinking. Yeah, sure. they don't have the information. So me, I have the information. I wouldn't go wear like a fake Louis Vuitton trainer. Knowing that I can see this from far, that this is not the it's original not the thing, or maybe the Jordan one, or whatever the easiest, or whatever. But people, why they take their money? Because fake is also expensive, my brother. Fake is not cheap. Fake is not cheap. A Louis Vuitton t-shirt fake, I could get it for three grand. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And someone who feel like In this okay, economy, yeah, In this recession, my homie, like that's a lot of money. A ten k t-shirt, you could get like a replica of it for like three k. Somewhere, somewhere around Joburg or oh, anywhere. But the argument is always that, nah, I'm just wearing it three times so it doesn't make sense to pay 10K. That's what the argument is always is. Every time I've met a person who is fake. Then you like, fake. <laughs> then you fake. It means like in life, you always look for shortcuts. For shortcuts. Where How do you I, feel about shortcuts? What's your take? My take is that like, have you seen when like constructors building a house, there's no shortcuts into building a house or the wall will fall. Mm. So everything goes step by step. You have to like start with the foundation. The foundation the needs to be strong. The foundation is not dry. You can't build. You can't build. So you find someone who just like, you know, if no, if if it's not construction constructed well, yes. it's gonna fall. So that's shortcuts. Uh, 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 there's this one thing you keep bringing it up on interviews I've seen. Yeah. For you, it's very important to pay homage, homage mm-hmm. to the forefathers. And yeah. you feel like our generation is not even acknowledging or is not even clued up enough yeah. to know the privilege Corner Juta has to exist. It's because podcasts like Sobering existed in 2015. Yeah. It's because there was a radio show that DJ Fresh did in 95. Mm-hmm. So people were always willing to listen about culture stuff. Yes. Do you still think that we need places that still landmarks for creatives to me that's what the street has been in the past and I feel like it is for the next generation we might just no longer be the target audience yeah because even when we came here it was like you guys were like it's over and now we're looking at it we like it's over but when we came we thought it was the place it was the place do you yeah. still think we need landmarks yeah we do man we really do Brahm needs to come back I see it's coming back when I started here most of these things were not around Mm. But like they here now, I feel like I could, I can come back and do something here. That's why I'm here on the show. Yeah. Because I'm seeing Play Brown is doing the most right now. They are coming back alive, you know. So we need these landmarks, bro. We need to build the super cities. South yeah. Africa needs super cities, you know. Brown shouldn't be the only place where the, which is cultured. We need more spaces, you yeah. know, where I know for me to to engage with someone to network. I know even when I'm in Pretoria. Even in Pretoria, we need a space like that. I'm from Pretoria, but like we don't have spaces yeah, like that. Pretoria's fighting musically. Yeah, Yo, musically, nah, 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 it's nah, top. Nah, nah. It's top. Nah, nah, nah. Musically, it's top. But I feel like, even like if when you're from Pretoria and you're a musician, you're not educated that much about the industry and especially the business. How then do people of your generation, because you came up in the spook generation, the mm. Leboram Fato generation, yeah. how are you guys yeah. actually? bridging the gap for us because it's one thing to say you guys father this thing you guys talk to these people but i feel like the generational divide only comes into play because you guys didn't even capture those moments to a point where we can like reflect on them or maybe i'm also not clued up on the moments that you did capture yeah because now it feels like you guys are from the blog era but then you guys don't do now that you made it now that you guys are paying you're paying your houses cash you're buying these sports cars sure there's no moment where you like this is what happened between 2006 and 2011. There's none of that. Do you guys feel like you guys are not helping the culture? We are helping the culture. But you guys are not educating us. How do you guys then build a generational bridge? What we've done in the past is what people have to look as reference. They shouldn't start things in the middle. That's why shortcuts. Mm. Look where these things come from then you'll know what we've done for the culture. But how do I find it? When I Google in South Africa, South Africa is through culture. Nothing's going to pop up. For real? Nothing's... Bro. Search the names. You'll find. There's... um, Let's say with the music right now. Yeah. um, 
spoke my time with Levan Rastawa produced Future Sound of Mzanzi. Okay. They spoke about South African local genres, mm. how they're going to pop overseas. And they've been talking about this since 2012, since 2010, 2012, around those years. And look at what Amapiano is doing today. Yeah. It's out there. It was foresight. You know, they spoke about it. And they would go in the hoods, find producers who were producing like Bacardi House, where Amapiano is from. Yeah. Amapiano was implemented from Bacardi. It's a template which was made for Amapiano guys to just add their presets on top of whatever that was there. Actually, Bacardi is the preset and Amapiano guys came. It's the plug and play. Yeah, it's the plug and play. You know, they just change plugins and all that. So those guys showed the industry how it's done through that documentary. They had a lot of people in that documentary. But in South Africa, until like 2016, 17, Wi-Fi is not really Wi-Fi for most people. Yeah. I mean, it's only now that the population is starting to own iPhones. Mm -hmm. And iPhones been popping. Sure. I think some people are still on Blackberries before COVID. What kind of Blackberries? Before they, COVID? Bro, we like... No, iPhone has been popping. This is what we were talking about with my homies, right? iPhone has been there, This is what bro. me and my homie were saying. We were sitting down, we were talking. I'm like, it's kind of insane that in the creative scene, 10K is nothing. Yeah. It's like you, you're undercutting me. Sure. But 10K in an everyday South African, that's a salary. That's a salary. That's something that feeds four kids. Yeah. So yeah, people wake up even for like for less, less, you know. So for me, I was like, when I say the Wi-Fi thing, the BlackBerry thing, I mean you handing it down to your cousin in the hood. Okay. It's like, oh, now he has it because now you're on the iPhone. Yeah. So the generation that's following you guys is literally like, we just got the iPhone now in COVID, and that's the iPhone success. Yeah. And then now that I just got it, we just got Wi-Fi 2021. Mm -hmm. The knowledge is not like being put on front street. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. How are you guys trying look, to stimulate that knowledge? Look, remember, like in black communities, we find like un a lot of underprivileged people. Yeah. That's a South Africa. You know, when I look at like guys who are rich in South Africa, they're not even more than a million. We don't have over... One million millionaires in South Africa. We only have, I think, forty thousand millionaires in South Africa. Yeah. Understand where we coming from? Real when I'm millionaires saying, or real or millionaires, dead millionaires? Real millionaires. We only have forty thousand millionaires in South Africa. You're right part now. of them. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yo, Jake so, Carson, give the youth jobs. <laughs> yeah. So. In Africa, it's like 80,000 million millionaires. Yeah, 80,000 yeah. millionaires. Actually, 80,000 millionaires in dollars in Africa, the whole Africa. Yeah. And check the whole population of Africa. It's insane. It's insane. But like, we only have 80,000. So when it comes to phones and all that, we're not there yet. Yeah. So that's what I'm asking, that because we're not there yet, it's not like this year you guys are going to say, yo, remember what we did? This is what we did. Yeah. You guys are like... That's why I say we need to build super cities. This is your super cities. Now. We, need is... To, we need to build super cities. You know, super cities will allow everyone to have access to the information. Same with now. I'm doing like... Uh, I'm with Jaeger. There's a project which I'm creative directing, leading creative directing right now. It's entitled Go Out and Get Home Safely. And that project, you find people where they go out to parties, but we don't know how they get back home. And you find maybe it's this alcohol brand that's hosting, but like it's going to bring people to the event, but like they don't know how people are getting get home them. safely. So this whole thing, which I'm creative directing with the Jaeger team, go out and get home safely. You know how we're going to keep the nightlife safer? Through Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi was the first thing which we've thought of. Marabaki on Torapo. Now, Udwell, could it lapong on a Wi-Fi? So we want to install Wi-Fis in clubs. So people... At the end of the night, they can connect to Wi-Fi and request their Ubers. Call, call or they can, you know, text my homie to come pick me up or, you know. But, like, clubs don't have Wi-Fi at all. I can go to Sumo right now. I can go to wherever in Joburg or just, I don't know, a club around. Even drama doesn't have Wi-Fi, you know. Free Wi-Fi for the people. A mobile hotspot for the people. Mm. They don't have Wi-Fi. But, like, with Wi-Fi, we can make the nightlife safer. That's the first take. But, like... We have to do this first installment, test it and see, and collect the data. Then that's how we're going to move 
um, forward to see which ideas can we implement to keep on making the nightlife safer. Mm. Maybe we'd partner up, I don't know, with Uber now for Uber to always be in hot spots, on our yeah. hot spots, you know, in our hot spots. Then maybe now we could also have wireless charging cocktail tables in clubs. We could have, you know, so many things on how to keep the nightlife safer. So, but like, we want to start with Wi-Fi, you know? And it's crazy how the Wi-Fi thing, even my art is going to be incorporated into it. We're going to have like a mural in each and every club. So we're painting South Africa now. We're trying to build super cities. we painting South Africa right now, like Coca-Cola. If you yeah. fly up, it's red. Coca-Cola is everywhere. It's red. So we're trying to bring the green and gold into South Africa. When you fly up, you see Jaeger saving the night with Jay Carson. Jay Carson's art, it's more purposeful now. Mm, it's designed now. It's designed now. And where you see Jay Carson's art in a club, you know you're getting home safely. You know you're connecting to Wi-Fi. So Jay Carson is our Superman. It's our Super Batman. Batman. So when you see the... the, the uh, Oh, green and gold, you just know. Yeah, with Jay Carson. Jay Carson is here. Yeah, Jay Carson is here. Okay, cool. You Let's know, so, it, yeah. and we want to install each and every club in yeah. South Africa. I'm trying to build super CDs now. And Jaeger right now, I'm within them. Yeah. It's a division. It's a Jay Carson division. Damn, you're inside a whole company. The brand. Yeah. It's a Jay Carson division. And I met with um, this guy, Melvin... Chihonda. He was the CEO of Vodacom in 2003, bro. Damn. Now he has his own... I was born just before them times. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so now he owns his own company. They call it Mobin. It's like a telecommunications company. They also venturing into mobile hotspots. Yeah. But like he's crossed over 35 countries in Africa right now. He's Damn. net works like the wi-fi hotspots are there so the proper satellites proper satellites in africa so i'm in partnership with them i'm trying to bring in a lot of more people into this super cd thing so we'll end up maybe i don't know also i don't know also building skyscrapers also building super 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 speaking of new your partnership things. with jägermeister and mobin how important are collaborations to you it's not a collaboration partnerships it's not a partnership. I'm there to help. Okay. Yeah. I'm there to help. So that's everything you do. Takota, you're there to help. No, no, that was a collaboration. Okay. Yeah. I'm there to help. With the other sphere, besides the, the hotspots, yeah. how important are collabs for you? Are you doing it for SEOs? Are you doing it for ROI? Are you doing it for the money? Or is it spreading the message even further? It's to see where my art is to see what my art can do with these brands. I saw the Dakotas and be like, I want to see how my art is applied on these Dakotas. I saw Birkenstock and be like, okay, let me do this program where I want to see my art. Mm. I want to see my art being applied and on then, these shoes. Yeah. You know, and, then and then they love it. Stuff. They love it. They'd be like, okay, we love the pertains. Let's see how it goes. You know? And Are you ever going to release the shoes for public consumption? Yeah. Yeah, but like not now because all this licensing and stuff. That's why I say with fashion, fashion is tricky. There's a lot of red tape into this thing, you know. So I don't want fashion anymore because in fashion, we put in a lot of efforts and, you know, and ish. at the end, you don't really, you know, like. You're undercut. Yeah, I want to add, like same with uh, COVID uh, 2020 when it hit. Um, I oh, yeah yeah I came back to South Africa in February. I opened like a skill development um, choir entitled Amen Club. I took him to Cape Town, got in partnership with D Keys, got in partnerships with McDonald's to give them free food, shop right to give them groceries, VW to transport them to rehearsals and stuff like that. Where I was giving back to the communities. Yeah. And Shapo, I did the project. It was success clean. Then COVID hit. When COVID hits, it was, I think, March, March. Then, yeah, they gave us, I think it was the 12th days. I can't remember. Then after the 12th days, then I had to go to Northwest. Northwest, I stayed there in the mountains in Northwest in Bochanala. Yeah. So they in Bochanala, 
it's like a quarry it's very huge a lot of hectares and you know so i just wanted myself there i just wanted to be there and see how can i explore more creative ideas being off the grid you yeah. know then that's when i approached you know say hey yo guys i have this huge ass um land in northwest i want to build murals from scratch i want to build walls and paint my art i want to design a collection this collection what's going to inspire me to design this collection is my surrounding of where where i am right now and i call that collection nature is consistent become one with the earth yeah. since i was one with the earth i was out in the outskirts of the grid they gave me a chance i came in they brought me into like a then they didn't have much budget. Actually, I don't know. Brands <laughs> never have money to afford me, maybe. I never know. What's a rough affording for Jake Carson? Because you're international. Yeah, it Just depends. It part. depends. It depends. It depends on what we're doing. But like for this one, um, my initial plan for this one, my approach to them was like, I'm going to start putting in my money into this mm. project that I'm doing with you guys. I paid everything. I paid art construction to build the walls. I built, uh, I paid the content guys. I paid everyone, like everything. I never even popped in the cent to yeah. do that thing. But like in return, I was expecting to, okay, let's move forward and let's put See millions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's put, yeah, yeah. Let's put millions. So then I was like, okay, I actually don't want to put millions right now. I'm going to approach my angel investors to put in 60 million rands for me to manufacture the clothes by myself. Are these angel investors and angel investors or like a man? Damn. 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 Yeah. Damn. 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 So if you say then I have something with I want you guys to put in millions into this thing so yeah. we can do the collection. You know? So yeah, we shot this thing we did the, a great job. I called out, I think, like 20 guys with bicycles, brought in denim jackets, bicycle outfits, you know. Oh, so they just gave you inventory? Yeah. Then when we had to, like, when, like, trying to build this relationship up, they started changing on me. I don't know for what. I think this lady, she was angry because, like, she gave me a shit and I told her that I'm going to shoot for it, but, like, I didn't shoot for it. I said, yo, what's up? Then she'd be like, yo, we don't want to work with you anymore just because of like I didn't create content for one for that one outfit. You know? Then I was like, did you see what I've done for your brand? I brought 20 bicycle kids, kids content creators. You know, everything, murals. murals. But like you now, you I angry. called my Hrotmans. My Hrotmans. Now, now I have to pay back the Hrotmans now. Not really. Damn. Not really. You the chosen one, huh? I'm anointed. Yeah, you you yeah. one of those where it's like I'm no, anointed. Whatever you need, call me. Call me. Yeah. So I feel like I didn't feel good with what they've done to me. Name? Huh? Are we bleeping the names? I don't know. I can mention. I'm not afraid of anyone. They can't do anything to me. Okay. You know, but like they know themselves. So I feel like those guys they just protect. They just want to work with their friends. You know, since I was not their friend. I was there for business. <laughs> they want to protect guys that they know. They'll sure. give a deal because they know lives nearby. They'll give Bani because Mara. I bet on my life or my ideas are super cool because but talk for two hours like these are the guys who get briefs from the brands. I create briefs for the brand for myself. Well, that's a fire sound bite. Bad. That's crazy. I don't want briefs from brand. You send a pitch deck. Yeah. Then this is how we going? Are you going with we're us? We're going with us. That's all. Yeah. I don't sit now and say, yo, Jay, we have this. We want to do this. Uh-uh. I was not afforded these opportunities. I created them. I created them. I came by. I came by. So, it's just a lot that's happening with these brands. And the brands are by. It's like, which I can fit up here. Because... They didn't pitch you were trying to, to me. Build a yeah, I'm trying to, you know. But like, I saw, we're like, okay, these guys are employees, actually. These are in the brands that they own. Mm. Paspanada, they're employees. They're working under someone. So, you know what I said? I was like, they will die working for people. 
Damn, Jay. <laughs> Damn, Jay. <laughs> not having what's theirs. There will always be salary guys. I'm not a salary guy. But in this, in this economy, we need salaries, man. I don't need salary. I'm a hustler. Sure. Casola, Caspina. My background, everyone was Spina. No, no, there's no one who comes in. Get a hot man. Yeah, there's that's no why, one. That's why I asked you, I was like, hey. investors or the hot man? Because the real move is like you, they have hot man. It's yeah. like, businesses don't expand with that type of weight sure. with red tape. Yeah. It purely has to be like, the money is there. It's just a matter of, mm. are you sure you are can you make sure this happen? Can, yeah. Yeah. So, I don't feel like I'll be a salary guy. I'll always be the guy who has the money to come in and make more money if you want to make money. Mm. And then to sum up this beautiful conversation, what's your word to the youth? I just got internet because is online. Make contact. If you're a content creator, please look into the camera for this one. Okay. Make contact. If you're a content creator, shoot nice things if you're a painter i mean like if you're a visual artist paint beautiful canvases for people because there's no shortcuts they won't like you because you whack they'll like you because you're dope and always learn and understand everything is the process so nothing is ever really done so everything is a process nothing is ever really done look at my art my art from scratch i was like i want my art to look like it's made by a three-year-old and ever, everyone understood me why i went that that route because art is for kids, fairly. You know, kids are the ones who understand art more than anyone else. Because kids are the ones who want to play with paint. Kids are the ones who want to apply paint and do that five thing. Yeah. That's where it starts. You know? So, just be yourself. Don't be fake. Do the real things, man. Don't be caught up in the cloud. I know that a lot of you guys back home. Yo, you want to be like mamang, you want to be like mamang, mara. That mamang, the person... Is an employee. He's an employee. <laughs> Even if they portray themselves as if they're doing this thing for themselves, they have managers, they have... They receive briefs. They sign by galleries. You Some know? are signed by agencies. By agencies, you know? I don't get this gallery thing. I will never be signed by a gallery. It's been a year since I've been painted. I've, I don't paint. I paint when I want to paint. Hmm. Not because there's an exhibition. You don't need I host outfit. my own. If I hosted like my one sole exhibition, and that's it. If I host another show, it won't be an exhibition. It will be a super city show. You know, and I just don't want to be owned. I own myself. I'm a son of God. I preach love. You know, it's crazy how even like two days back or yesterday when Kanye wore that. White Lives Matter. White Lives Matter. I felt like the message was about all lives matter, but people never understood that because that guy, he's spreading love. What matters is love. Hate is evil. You know what I mean? Hate is evil. So to matter is to love. He's trying to, because us black people, we've been mad for 400 years and we're still riding in the passenger. Why? Just because of someone says white lives matter, we all like, Come on. He's trying to show us, Hore, yo, we won. If I have a white neighbor, I can say hi. If I'm married to a white girl, if my friend is married to a white girl, imagine if my friend is black and he's married to a white girl and they have kids. And me, I pull up to him and be like, why Kanye says this? How am I going to feel? You're yeah. trying to be one. You know, we're trying to be one. Like, it's the message. Look at with even us black people. A black person will never put you on like the way how we hate white people. It's not like I'm picking up white people, but like a black person will never put you on how a, a white they person will put you email. on. Like, no, I'm working with the agency. You're not getting the email. Mm, but like, no, what's the but email but for that lady? But a white person, do you know white people, the reason why they're successful is because like they put, them, they put each other on. A black person will never put you on. Will never. A black person always no, sees... Jay, I never want to say... Because I understand. That's why like, I'm preaching this right now. Yeah, you're about, preaching community. Uh, yeah, you know, about how people put it. I know, like, 
come on, why people were singing ladies, they very relaying, they did all these things, they what what they oppressed black people, colonized and it's part of life. I just wanna write the future. I don't wanna rewrite the history. I wasn't there. My parents were there. Yeah. My grannies were there. They passed away. They must just go with the history. Bye bye history. I'm looking at the future, trying to build super CDs. Who's gonna help me build a super CD? Mahrutman. <laughs> Mahrutman. You know? So the red tape and copper is not working, it's clearly. Not, I spani, but these guys, you find brand managers act as if they own the company. That's not your company. That's not your dad's company. <laughs> Give people opportunities. That's not your dad's company. Yeah. You have the power. That's what you're employed to do. Yeah. To change people's lives. To change lives. people's lives. That's why they hire It's not like now you're going to call the owner and be like, yo, Jay approached me for a job. No. The owner gave you the job for you to make decisions. Hmm. Start living within your power. Yeah. What are you fine, guys? Or nah, nah, flop. I get if maybe I was wrong to say a black person won't put you on, but like, I know from experience. But I want to try Black people will never help each other. Black people never help each other. Black people are always jealous. That's why, even in the hood, you find that mama is not the mama. It's 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 not the mama. A black person will oppress you. For nothing. For nothing. At least someone will oppress you, oppress you to gain something. So, I don't want to now like look at classism and racism and all those things. All those things must end. We have to stop talking about all those things. Who's better? We all matter. Let's sum it up. We Let's all matter. Nah, that was beautiful. That was we beautiful. all matter, my homie. We all matter, my brother, so...